now we've got something rather unpleasant to talk yeah. about in this lesson, which is space junk. Yeah, I mean, and it's a topic we kind of hear about. It's a growing problem, and that's obviously what we're going to dive into. But I guess, firstly, we have to understand what is space junk, right? What is junk in space? It's not burger wrappers. It's something else, clearly. Yeah, so space junk is usually old spacecraft. Okay. Or bits of old spacecraft, or even current spacecraft. A spacecraft can still be working and still be space junk. Yep. Um, or it can be upper stages of rockets which are left in space when, during the launching process. The, the lower stages usually fall back to That's Earth, right. but the upper stages stay in space. Yep. Or it could be a, a glove that an astronaut dropped, or, or a screwdriver, which is all of which have happened. Yes. Or if a spacecraft explodes, it could be all the fragments of the spacecraft. All these things are space junk. And I guess, I mean, sometimes you see the videos, you know, of the rocket separating and things like that, and you see little bits coming off of it. Those little bits are space junk too. Yeah, they're often brackets. I think they yep. try and design them now with minimum number of those things, yeah. but uh, they're a problem. Now, as of, uh, this is as of 2022, a year ago for, at the time of filming, yeah. there have been about 13,000 launches, yep. um, of which about 9,000 of the what was launched are still in space and about 6,000 still functioning. So, so these are number of launches and these are the working ones. So obviously 2,600 or so. There's actually more, la less launches. This is the number of things launched. Because often one spacecraft will launch multiple objects. Ah, okay. So, uh, we're, so clearly then some of these satellites have ever already come back down. Yes, yeah, so you see the majority of the spacecraft is still up. Uh, a lot of them have fallen back down. Yep. Um, but And the majority of those are still functioning, but there's a, you know, a couple of thousand non-functioning yep. uh, spacecraft. Now, the number of objects tracked is way higher. 31,000 objects routinely tracked. And I guess this is going to be some of the points that you made, right? It's not just the satellites that are being tracked here. Yes, it's also the upper stages yeah. or the debris if satellite breaks up or things yeah. like that. So there's a lot more bits of space junk than was launched yep. because one thing launched may have turned into multiple objects or dropped multiple objects en route. And that's the number that's being tracked. The number that are out there are probably more than that. Okay, so... Bigger than 10 centimetres inside, we think there's probably about 36,000. And then there's probably about a million objects bigger than one centimetre, which are too small to track. And then 130 million things greater than one millimetre to one centimetre. So, so we're, we're, we're getting a lot of stuff here, but I guess the question that we have to wonder is, which ones do we actually worry about? Which ones are the problems? That's problem? right. Well, here's a fly through of where they all are. Yep. Um, and there's a ring at geostationary orbit. Okay. Because uh, a lot of spacecraft go there, and so right. when they die, they seem to stay there. And this is kind of the middle Earth orbit, yes. nominally. So we're going to zoom in towards the middle, and you see. Yep. Um, so we're now looking. There's the ring. Yep. It seems actually kind of two rings, and the reason for that is that some spacecraft are boosted away to a yep. um, graveyard, or right. we'll talk about later when they come to the end of their life. But then the vast majority Are of the space junk is in low Earth orbit. That's right. And you can see them all flying around in different speeds and orientations and angles. Um, so there's a steady stream of these things flying around the Earth. So that's where it is. And I guess, mm -hmm. keep in mind, that was only the ones that can be tracked. That's that 36,000 number, not the... Which is most of the large ones, but that's not right. the smaller ones. Now, that looked like a lot in that diagram, but if you space is big. That's right. So having sort of 36,000 big lumps in that enormous volume of space, yep. what we can do here is we can plot um, how many there are um, in density. So it's how many cubic kilometers okay. per yep. object as a function of altitude. So what you can see is that typically the numbers are about one piece of space junk per 10 to the minus 7, so it's about 10 million cubic kilometres per piece of junk. Oh, that sounds not that much. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of space for each piece of junk. Okay. So you're not going to get up there and look like it's uh, some bit of party. There's Floating around, yeah, yeah. Wrappers and cans all over the place. I guess it's not too dissimilar than what people picture about the asteroid belt, right? Yes. The asteroid belt things, again, each asteroid is so far apart, you're not seeing one from the next. If you're typically sitting in space, you won't see any space junk. That's right. Because it's 10 million kilometers, cubic kilometers for each piece of space junk. So you think, this isn't a problem. That's right. I mean, if we managed to get Australia down to only <laughs> one piece of junk per 10 million kilometers. We'd be doing pretty well. We'd be doing pretty well. The trouble is that these things are moving really fast, faster yeah. than rifle bullets relative to each other. That's right. And so you, your, your model, mental model should not be like a... Uh, a picnic with rubbish strewn everywhere. It should be like a battlefield with bullets flying everywhere. So, so we're, we're worried now about, you know, one in 10 million bullets flying at us. That's right. So if you 
freeze a battlefield at any given moment, the fraction of the air that contains a bullet at that moment is very small. Bullets are small, right? That's right. But, but they're still a very dangerous place to be because they're moving fast. Yeah. It might be over there then, but it might go through you shortly That's afterwards. Right. And because these things are moving so fast, even the small ones can do a lot of damage. This is a flake on the window of the space shuttle caused probably by a flake of paint. Yeah, I, I think this is one of the most famous cases that people are imagining because, you know, how would you think you'd scrape off a little paint of the wall and create... And, and also the glass here, as we talked about before, it's a sometimes get stronger in space and they purposely made it actually thick because they were worried about things like micrometeoroids and things yeah. like that. They actually stopped painting the uh, yeah. the main fuel tank of the space shuttle to stop the paint flaking off from the ultraviolet and becoming a hazard in space. Yeah. But yes, even a flake of paint can blow a chip in your windscreen. And if you have something bigger like a ball bearing, that's going to, unless you have a pretty thick armour plate, that's going to blow a hole. This is actually a lab test on Earth. Yes. But it's showing at these sort of velocities, you know, someone's spanner that they've dropped is going to do a lot of damage. Because that's the key, right? It's not the mass necessarily the object, it's the velocity it's traveling at, and they are all traveling at hyperspeed. That's right. And so here's a, a, what, what might happen to a spacecraft if it gets hit, and even a tiny thing will cause it to spin and break up and fall to pieces. And so I guess that's the problem, is you get one that hits, and so obviously the main spacecraft tumbles, but you have all the other bits that fly off of it. That's right. So think of it as trying to walk across a World War I battlefield rather than through a, a garbage tip, and you've got a good idea of what it might be like in space with the space junk.